Beautiful night for baseball. The temperature's perfect. Red Bush Stadium in St. Louis as the homestand continues. It is 81 degrees. And with Jim Edmonds, Jim Hayes, I'm Dan McLaughlin. Great to have you with us as we get you set for game one of this three game set. And Dylan Carlson is in center field tonight with Lars Newtbar in right, Brendan Donovan in left. The reason why plantar fasciitis puts Boehner on the IL. So you may be seeing a lot of Dylan Carlson in center. It is Adam Wainwright on the mound for the Cardinals. Still trying to get win number 190. He's had a bunch of cracks at it, and this season he's five and five. Well, he's not getting the break that he needs, and by the way, uh, he is going against pretty much every ace there is in the baseball game in the baseball world this year. And you can see his Hyundai pitch arsenal. Pretty much everything you got. Just what is working tonight, and how is he going to use it? There's a look at the Hyundai pitch arsenal from Adam Wainwright, who's been very good against Miami in his career, seven and two with a 2.99 ERA. Don Mattingly, the manager of the Marlins, has John Birdie at the top, and then Garrett Cooper, Jorge Soler, Abisail Garcia, Jesus Sanchez, Miguel Rojas, Brian Anderson just activated off the IL, Brian De La Cruz, and the former Pirate. Jacob Stallings who won a gold glove a year ago. So Ali and the Cardinals suffering a really tough loss yesterday in a series loss over the weekend against the Chicago Cubs. They were up five to nothing in the ball game yesterday. Cubs tied it up won it in extra innings and also for a little bit of time they're going to miss Jack Flaherty and Jim Hayes will have more on that. Later in our telecast, and the first pitch taken high, and we are underway. John Birdie with 17 stolen bases this month, and that is a, a club record. Breaking the record held by Juan Pierre, he had 16, and he also comes in riding a 10 game hitting streak, career best, 366 the average. He is a 23 game on base streak, began at the beginning of this month. 326 is average here in the month of June. So you get the idea. He's a key <laughs> get the idea. He's, for the Marlins. He is going bananas right now. As a matter of fact, the Marlins lead the National League ahead of the Cardinals. It's stolen bases that drops in for a strike. Marlins with 56, and they are second to Texas. They lead all the baseball with 61. 298 the overall average for John Birdie the second baseman fouled back and from 2 and 0 now to a count of 2 and 2. Well tonight is the 21st start for Adam Wainwright since he turned 40 passing Murray Dixon third most in franchise history the most Grover Cleveland Alexander he had 80 starts after he turned 40. That's it out of play. That's amazing if you think about it. 80. And, and think about how hard it is to stay healthy at that age. And 80 starts is at least a couple of years of straight starts back to back to back to back to back. And the 2 2 slow breaking ball, and he struck him out. And the first out in our series, a strikeout. As he catches Birdie with the slow curveball. This is the one thing for Adam. Everyone knows he has that big breaking ball, but when it starts up that high and it doesn't come all the way down, it, it looks like it's going to be a ball. Usually his breaking ball has to end up down, down by the feet for it to be a strike. And that one just broke enough to get into the zone. And now it is Gary Cooper. Fastball taken up and in. The umpires trip Gibson is behind the plate. Laz Diaz the crew chief down at first Chad Fairchild at second Eric Backus at third. One ball and one strike Cooper hitting 363 here in June. And that is the fourth highest average in all of baseball this month. And the one one. 
off the plate and it's a count of two balls and one strike. I think that you're noticing right now that the air the heavy air that we have here and it's not even humid today is allowing Adam to have nice run to his cutter slider and big breaking ball and a base hit into right field over to cut it off it'll be new farm and he'll hold Gary Cooper to a one out single. The glasses on for Newt Barr in these 6:45 starts here at Bush Stadium. It really is a, a Sunfield in right. Donovan is in left. Carlson in center. Around the horn, presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, and it's Arnado, Edmund, Gorman, and Goldie on the infield. Avon Herrera, the catcher tonight. Well, when you get the Sunfield, Danny, what you got to do is you got to stand in the shadow. If you look right there, where Lars is going to probably do the best he can to stay in that because. If you can't see the ball off the bat. You can't catch it. So you got to kind of navigate your way around where you want to stand. Kind of start squatting down a little bit if you feel yourself getting a little deep, a little close. Follow that shadow around for a little bit. It's the light standard there that he's in the shadow of. Off the plate to Soler. 13 home runs is driven in 33. Tremendous power. And on the season, hitting 219. Miami comes in five games below the 500 mark. They are 12 and a half back of the New York Mets and in fourth place of the National League East. The shift on the left side and a 1 1. Be interested tonight to watch Wayno working with the young catcher, Ivan Herrera, no Yadi or Molina. I think they probably did a lot of talking. Last couple of days, and I wouldn't be surprised if they haven't worked out some kind of way to kind of signal so Adam doesn't have to shake off a lot. Might be little, it might be inning to inning. Um, might talk before the inning. Hey, this is what I'd like to do, you know, and keep it fresh. And or you might just simply just hold your glove a certain way or whatever it takes. But I know a lot of times why. And, and we don't ever talk about this. Why pitchers only like to throw to certain guys is because they don't want to shake all the time. If a guy has no idea really what his style of pitching is like, then the more you shake, the more you get frustrated, the more you start thinking around. You start thinking, 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 and then you start second guessing yourself. And see a good two seam fastball right there. And it brings in Abisail Garcia. Saw him a bunch with. The Brewers last year he had 29 home runs and drove in 86 last season. Said seven home runs in his career against the Cardinals. He is over his last eight with a couple of strikeouts. The righties hitting went out a clip of 261 and the lefties at 249. Let's see. Uh both of the guys Herrera and Wainwright kind of give a little look to the uh, umpire. I could also see Herrera having maybe a, a little bit of a game plan on his his form kind of like Not what a, a, idea. a QB would work with in in the NFL. I'll tell you what Good I like the style. Ball. He does a nice job of receiving the ball. He's real quiet. Gives a nice target. Doesn't move around a lot. I think it would be funny if the pitchers actually had the uh, pitch call. <laughs> Just tell, tell the catcher here, this is what's coming. And the 1 1 pitch by Adam Wainwright inside. Essentially, Wayno will dictate what he wants to throw anyway. Pretty there much. are five pitch comms in terms of what goes in your hat. And it's Wayno, the catcher, the two middle infielders, and your center fielders, so they can hear what pitch is coming. And the 2 1 hit down the right field line, it's slicing foul out of play. You can see Lars right there, that shadow was sneaking up on him a little bit and moving, and so he was kind of standing out there in the sun, and he had no idea where that ball went when it first went off the bat. Now he's sliding back over, way over into the other side. More kind of down the line. 
That's shading from the sun too. It's it's, it's really hard. tough. That's what I'm saying you got to find a spot where you can get close enough to where you want to play and also have to be able to see. Two two pulled foul. You know in center field you have a lot of options out there just at the angle and the best you can hope for in right field is just hope for a quick inning and then a long little bit of a longer inning is when he runs out there in the top of the second the first thing he's going to want to see is if the shadows are gone or not. It's miserable when you're looking into the sun you know like I said before it, it's like anything it doesn't matter what you have on your eyes if the ball goes in the sun or in the lights it doesn't matter what you have on your head it does not help. And the short lead at first the 2 2 pitch swing and a miss three strikeouts here at the top of the first for Adam Wainwright and coming up for St. Louis the home half of the first it'll be Edmund Donovan and Goldie no score. And yep has Lars Newtbar and the catcher Ivan Herrera. Pablo Lopez is five and three. And a 2 6 1 ERA. We saw him earlier pitch against St. Louis in Miami. He is awfully good. Now that's at home. He's dominated home, but overall very good. There's a look at his Hyundai pitch arsenal. As Jimmy said, he'll throw the kitchen sink at you, throws a lot of strikes, averages about a strikeout look at the per usage. inning. Look at the usage with the four seamer and the cutter kind of blends in with that. But then the, uh, the changeup. That's what you're going to be battling. I think the reason why the four seamer and the cutter are a little bit kind of blended is because I think a lot of his four seamers cut. He has a natural, like almost like a football. A one pitch, and that nothing to right there is what you're going to have to pay attention to. Cardinals begin the day in second place in the NL Central, one game back of Milwaukee. And the 0 2 pitch to the Cardinals shortstop Tommy Edmond. A grounder foul. Well, the Marlins, we're going to see two of the very good pitchers that they have in their rotation. This guy tonight. And then Wednesday, Sandy Alcantara, former Cardinal with a 195 ERA. So it's a tough, tough stretch of baseball beginning tonight. 14 straight against the NL East. Upcoming road trip will feature both Philadelphia and Atlanta. At the 0-2 pitch, Cardinals made a move today. Jack Flaherty, shoulder strain, Bader, the plantar fasciitis on the IL. Connor Capel has been called up along with James Nail. You say right-handed reliever available to go tonight if need be. Capel has not arrived at the ballpark just yet. And when those two make their debuts, it'll be the 10th and 11th players to make their major league debut for the Cardinals this year. A lot of moving parts. Ooh. Not the way you want to draw it up at the beginning of the season. 2 2 lined into right hand, staying with it to make the catch Garcia. I think that ball just for him, thankfully, didn't get up in the air. And a little bit to the gap, and that's like the only way you can see the ball without glasses on right now. De La Cruz in left, Sanchez in center, Garcia in right. Round the horn presented by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers. Anderson, Rojas, Birdie, and Cooper on the infield, and Jacob Stallings behind the plate. Fastball and a strike to Brendan Donovan. 32 hits now in the month of June. The last rookie to do it was Albert Pujols. Prior to that, Cardinals coach Willie McGee. They both had 34 hits as rookies in the month of June, Willie in 1982. And I bring that up because I always like to see and talk about the great Willie McGee. Of course you do. Who doesn't? Donovan on a hop to second baseman John Birdie. And yeah, that'll be out number two. I thought we were going to watch something special last night when he went uh, triple homer in the first two at bats. I stuck around for a while to watch it. And I was like, ah, God, that would have been so much fun. I actually thought he was going to get it. After he got the home run, I thought, okay, he's got the two hard parts of this out of the way. He's going to get it. Isn't that funny? You kind of just go, wait, did that just really happen? Are we just going to make it that easy already? <laughs> Man, it's kind of like a no hitter. 
and you get to like the fifth inning and you say wait a minute there's no hits here. Wait, did I miss something. What's going on. Here's Goldie hitting 391 here at Bush Stadium. And he was one of the three home runs hit midway through against Chicago when the Cardinals jumped out to that five nothing lead. His 18th home run of the season. This place had to be. Oh and he hits this one out to deep left at the wall gone off of Ben Mackland. Boy the folks at McDonald's getting their money's worth. Off Big Mac land. High towering home run for number 19 off the bat of Goldie. <laughs> Did we both just say, oh, <laughs> that was loud. Wow. I mean, wow. That is a hanging slider cutter. So loud. I didn't think that ball was going to come down. That's about as high as he hits a ball ever. Oh my goodness. Absolutely crushed. He's now driven in 63 and a fastball to Nolan Arenado. You have to get to Lopez early. He's allowed 10 runs, eight earned, five home runs coming in the first inning. After that, 17 runs he's allowed. So. He really settles in. And the fly ball off the bat of Arenado to De La Cruz coming on to make the catch. What a force he has been here in 2022. Cardinals first baseman Paul Goldschmidt. Home run number 19. And it's 1 0 St. Louis. Where one, he said it was tight. We're going to see what the doctor says today. And we're going to see what we're dealing with. There was just a little bit of trouble that we had that we think we can work our way through. Jack said, I haven't even seen the doctor yet. So if you're asking about a timetable, I just don't have the answer. Dan, short term, John Mazalock says he'll continue to lean on the young arms. They're hoping Steven Matz recovers quickly and possibly down the road they'll look at other options, possibly a, a trade. But not sure how long Jack Flaherty will be out Danny and it leaves a hole in the rotation. All right Jimmy thank you. So they have selected the contracts of Connor Capel outfielder James Nail from Triple A Memphis. Capel wears number 71 Nail will wear number 68. Nail by the way grew up a massive Cardinals fan. He's from the Cape Girardeau area. And so when he makes his debut He'll be doing it as a, a Cardinal. Spent a number of years in the Oakland system in their minor leagues. Welcome home. You got it. <laughs> pretty cool. That is pretty cool. There's Jesus Sanchez. He's driven in 14 in his last 18 games and a ground ball that's hit to Nolan Gorman for the out. Jimmy, your Toyota key to the game. Well, I was just going to say that's the trouble right there, but. The Miami Marlins have a little bit of, of tough luck swinging at curveballs. The percentages are way down, and guess what? This guy throws one of the best ones in the game. And I was just going to say right there, you can see, even when you time the curveball perfectly, you hit it right on the ground of the second baseman. It's just the, the angle of the ball going down and the bat coming through the zone. You have to hit it perfectly. And most of the time, it does not work out. Miguel Rojas hitting 236 shortstop for Miami as he calls time. The home run hit by Goldie was number 299 of his outstanding major league career. There's the curveball. It was also his 75th first inning home run, fourth most among active players, home runs in that first inning. And I think he knocked out the M in the French fry. He may have. It looks like it's a little dark. 0 2 is whacked foul down I'm the right field line. That, I'm still in shock how loud that was off the bat, and how good a swing that was. That is just awesome to watch. I'm with It was loud. There's just certain times that you listen, BP even. You know, Nolan Gorman, when he hits one, it's loud. I think if you listen to the playback, you'll hear it, and you'll hear us yelling at the same time. <laughs> And that is tapped foul. 
So Herrera was born June 1st of 2000. A week or so later, Adam Wainwright drafted in 2000. That's amazing. I was halfway through my first year as a Cardinal. Yep. At 29 years old. <laughs> 0 2 pitch. Well, Jimmy, it is your birthday, so again, happy oh, yeah. birthday I to. About that. I thought we were through that already. The Cardinal Hall of Famer, and it's just a yearly reminder that we're getting older. Yes, we are. There I am right there. Back in the day, can't really see my face or my jersey, but someone said it's there. And they one two lined and a base hit into center. It's a good piece of hitting right there by Roas. Went down to get it and a one out hit. See if that was just a sinker that just kind of stayed on the same plane or I mean it was a nice pitch down the way just did a really nice job adjusting to it. It's a good piece of hitting. There's Brian Anderson. He can play the outfield. He's at third base tonight. Missed 28 games. He had a lower back injury, so he's back in there for Don Mattingly and the Marlins. Always think about the ground ball with this pitching staff. 77 percent ground ball rate. When you're talking about Wayno and Hudson and the others, and that's why the infield defense has to be. Better than most, and it is. And it still is, and you're missing basically one main guy, and the other guy's out of position, which we all know now it doesn't really matter because Tommy can play any position on the field. But I, I'm uh, not so sure he's out of position. <laughs> he's not out of position, but he's out of his position so far at the big league level, but uh, a shortstop through and through. For life. One ball and one strike. Look at that. 77% this 2022 staff and the highest opponent ground ball percentage. And the Cardinals of 04 on there. And why not when you had Albert, Scott Rowland, Edgar Renteria, Tony Womack was a good defender, had very good range. Cardinals have turned 74 ground ball double plays most in baseball and Wayno has induced nine of those. Here's the check on the runner Rojas. I think the outfielders especially right and center are kind of hoping it stays on the ground for another half an inning because they're still battling the sun. Yeah we're about 15 minutes away to where that finally does not become a massive issue for the right fielder. The one two. Let me just tell you. That is an awful awful feeling as a player let alone a young player. I mean it is no man's land out there if you're in the league for 10 years but you have a year year and a half. That is a sinking feeling standing out there. It's ruled a wild pitch here is Herrera it and it just kept it in rolled. front but then lost it went to his left and reading the play wisely was Rojas serious spin on that ball right there because he knocked it down well and it just kind of trickled away and the 2 2 pitch staying away 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 from Brian Anderson Miami is just hopeful he can stay on the field if he's on the field meaning he's healthy he produces it just good play been able to do it shoulder issues then the back issue is come up this season slow breaking ball and a strikeout and that is <laughs> number four for Wayno. I feel you right there. He thought he was all over that thing and it was just a little bit slower than he thought. We got him trying not to smile. <laughs> Watch this he sizes it up perfectly and just whoop, didn't get there. I mean that's right down the middle too. I mean it's chest high coming out of the hand and you don't really see a lot of times when his breaking ball is on Yachty catch the ball at his chest it's usually down De La Cruz with the fly ball into left and Donovan is there to make the catch Marlon Strand their second runner it's Gorman Carlson Yepes followed by Carlson and Yepes.
And a ground ball that's tapped up the line. Foul. Let's check out Garcia right here. Now, I, if, I don't know if we can back out or not. But he's got doesn't have glasses on. But if I'm standing out there where his feet are, are in the shade. So I will move forward a little bit and take my chances and even duck just enough. Because like I said, if you don't see the ball off the bat, it doesn't matter where you're playing. Well, one pitch. Hit up the middle. Shift was on. Rojas makes the play. Got down the line a little bit right there, didn't he? He surprised me in that regard. He's also surprised me with his defense in a good way. He's done a nice job at second base. I think that, you know, the, the one thing they were worried about was, you know, not enough time at second over the years or can he play at this level? And, and you're right. I've seen him run first to third, second to home, first to home a couple times. He doesn't look that quick. But when you just see him run in a straight line, because he's kind of a bigger guy, you can see him get down the line. I think he's deceiving as far as big basically, kid yeah, too. he's a big guy. Everything that he does, he does a pretty good job of, and I've been impressed. There's Carlson. Seven of his last ten hits have gone for extra bases. Had a double yesterday. On the year, hitting 247 with four home runs, and he's driven in 17. Shift on the right side for Miami. Playing to pull in the outfield. Carlson on the ground, two hops. Gary Cooper is there, takes it himself, and now number two. So this is who I was talking about, Jimmy. So you get the first inning, ERA above five. And then after that, boy, does he settle in? ERA just above two. I mean, anything in the twos now, you are dealing. So you got to get to him early. All right. He's one of those guys that, you know, it's a feel pitcher. You know, if you throw Adam's the same way. I mean, you're kind of watching the same guys, a little different stuff, but is more or less, you know, a guy with a bunch of different pitches. It's got good velocity, but not great. But everything comes out of his hand, has a little bit of feel to it. You know, cutter, slider, sinker, whatever, change up, especially. Sometimes that doesn't match up instantly. So that makes sense. There's Juan Yepes homered into Big Mac land yesterday. Ball that was crushed for his seventh home run. I was I was about to say right before Goldie knocked that ball flat. That must have been an exciting inning because I was jumping up and down at home. And I was hoping in Nolan was close. I wanted the back to back to back. I thought that would have been awesome. But then Yepes hit that ball. I mean this place had to be rocking. It was it was as loud as it's been all year. That's why for me it was just shocking that they Oh, gave up the five runs to get this game tied, and it happened in a hurry. And one puts it into Big Mac land. They've now added the section to the left of facing Big Mac land as part of Big Mac land. Well, I think that, um, well, from my angle on the TV, and you saw it right there, I almost thought when he hit it, I was like, oh, don't be foul. You know, from that angle, a little bit, especially yeah. TV angle. But you could tell after a second that he was starting to jog that it had a chance. and. I know you hate to waste those. And I'd hate to throw the ball in there when he's pulling off like that. <laughs> Ooh, just missed on the inside corner, and a count is full. Jacob Stallings is the catcher, and he's a good one. Very quiet behind the plate, won a gold glove, new bar on deck. We saw him with Pittsburgh. He was one of the first players that we saw using pitch com right away. 3-2. And a strikeout of Juan Yepes in the first for Pablo Lopez. And we head to the third, a Goldie home run, the difference. And that they are 33 games above 500 is because their starting pitching has been really good this year. It's not just about Stanton, Judge, and some of the others, but their pitching has come together. I mean, there's no secret to this game. If you're going to be good, you're going to have to have pitching. And, you know, the better your starting pitching is, Obviously, the better your team's going to be, but it's 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 un, it's in numbers sometimes, and it's so ridiculous to watch. It is black and white in baseball, and like you said, we only see Judge and those guys. But if he really comes down to the real deal, it's the pitching staff. You know, it's not, the, and it's usually. I mean, the bullpen obviously is going to win you or save you some games. But man, these starters—that is what the game is all about. Stallings pops out to first and the top of the lineup 
John Birdie. Struck out looking on a 2 2 curveball as Wayno struck out four first time through the lineup. On the video board during the commercial break showing highlights of Jim Edmonds wishing him a happy birthday and you know you were a pretty good player those, <laughs> those highlights were, were pretty good that highlight uh, just got me a bunch of text messages all of a sudden too so a bunch of friends at the game and enjoying this one to nothing lead and I mean uh, you know the what did they say the, the farther you get away from the game the better you were you know we get visitors in here once in a while that are like that. <laughs> Do we have a visitors? Andy Bennis came by today. It's good to see him. Well, this oh. would be a test, by the way, oh, for Roski snuck in. Yeah. For Wayno and Herrera with Birdie at first base. 17 steals in June. Last time a player had 17 stolen bases or more in any month was Starling Marte at 19 in August of last season and the last player to do that in the National League Trey Turner in the month of June and they know that he's got 21 on the year here's Garrett Cooper at the plate not running and the pitch taken for a ball all the things that can happen with a base dealer outside of the obvious of going to get second base but speeding up your pitcher pitches sometimes get left high in the zone because you're trying to get quicker to the plate. Well you know he is running here chance for Herrera and birdies in there safely picked a great pitch right there a big breaking ball Adam got the ball to the plate pretty quickly but it's the one thing that maybe you can run on that is going to give the catcher trouble because he just has to wait can't get out there too quick and you can see by the time he's about ready to throw birdies over halfway to second base and no chance well just like you said right if you rush to the plate your feet and your arm are in different sync so the ball stays up well what happens when you try to do too much at the at the plate throwing the second you can see exactly right there you just Yanked it into the ground trying to be too fast and that's just really not much you can do as a catcher right there. So that's number 22 for birdie and he's eight for, uh, 18 for 19 here in the month of June. That's unbelievable. You can give all the stats you want. It's still incredible. You guys just don't Think run either. It. As much as the running game is down to a, an exact science it seems like. Birdie has stolen more bases this month than all but Jorge Mateo and Julio Rodriguez <laughs> and we're talking about guys that are leading their leagues you know among the league leaders he's got more this month we're right there with him and you wouldn't think that I mean just kind of watching he has that kind of speed or or burst but clearly he has all of the above. 2 2, a curveball left up but pulled foul. Marlins come in on the road, just 14 wins. They're 14 and 22 away from Miami. One of the culprits has been their offense. 11th in the National League with runners in scoring position at 222. And we showed you earlier that Cardinals have done a really nice job in the head to head meetings between the two teams in these spots. So one out runner at second base the next to Garrett Cooper just off the plate full count. I think the Cardinals have their hands full every night because I think that whoever you are if you want to be recognized and you want to be good you have to beat the teams that have been there for a long time and this is like playing the Yankees and if you want to kick start your game or be measured against someone and especially the pitching staff they're going to try and step it up. And Herrera hops on it, throw to third, and safe. What a jump right there. I might slow him down a little bit, but he's lucky that's not Scott falling on him. <laughs> Scott rolling. 
It's a great jump right here. The ball is right in front of Herrera, and he is gone. Little elbow slash shin to the head right here. Watch this knee to the back of the head. He may have come off the bag though in Roland, or rather Arenado. After <laughs> Sorry. you say Scott, but Arenado kept the tag on. Watch. So the hand is there. Then right there, he's off the bag, and it Clearly looks like he's out. Bag, yeah. It's a great job by Nolan right there. Well, the Cardinals are out between the mound at second base. The infielders just taking a look at it. They've showed the replay that we believe will have Birdie be out. And that's the reaction of the fans here at Bush Stadium. I know a lot of the players are not big fans of this type of replay right here because this is just part of the game. It's it's almost to me like when you slide into home plate, you, you hardly slide and touch home plate. You know, you slide over it. I mean, the thing isn't elevated. It actually is kind of a little bit in a hole. So when you slide across it, you hardly ever touch it. So it's just part of the game. And if you slide past the bag and you see it with your own eyes, I get it. But when you come off the bag for a split second just because your body can't stay on the ground, and this is not, it's a great slide. This is part of it. Boy, what a good look by our crew here to find that. That is a and great shot right there. So the right call was made. You know it's really funny Danny right there. He really had no reason to put that hand out and come up unless he just kind of you know when you put your head down you lose track of where you're at. He had no he had no reason to put his hand down and lift up. He should have just laid flat. Probably wouldn't have got the knee to the head either. On a hop backing up. Tommy Edmond to Nolan Gorman at second base. Cardinals challenge goes their way. And the ground ball off the bat of Solaire. That is a big call going St. Louis's way. One nothing midway through the boy band night. Band will be here. Cardinals.com slash theme on July 8th. Here's Lars Newtbar. Connor Cable has made his way into the St. Louis dugout. There he is on the right. Dakota Hudson the left. The 1 0. Chopped right side. Backing up Birdie, and he makes the play. Tell you what, he's going to be kicking himself when he goes and watches that replay. It was one of those that was hanging up there for him to hit, and he just kind of cut across it. Von Herrera over the weekend is first run batted in and hit in the big leagues. First pitch is strike. Ninth place batter for Ali. Would imagine we may see a little run of Von Herrera and whoever's producing is going to play. And the 0 1. Well, you know, I, I think you have now two good catchers that are both young. And one has a little bit more experience than the other, and I, you know, it's just sometimes it becomes, who does the front office like? Who do you want to see more of? And who needs to play on an everyday basis? And who is, you know, I mean, Kiz has been sitting there for what two, three years now, and he's done an, an, an incredible job. He's very qualified to do his job, and then this young man comes up, and you can't let him sit too long because. Then you're wasting two guys' time, right? So, do you want um, Herrera, who is only 22 years old, to come up and watch Andrew Kisner play, or do you want to give him a little bit of a shot just to see what he can do? And then, when you have to send him back, send him back. I mean, it's so many things to look at, and how you play that game. You know, you, you know how it is with the kids, right? Your your own kids. Do you want your kids to be on varsity and watch, or JB and and play every day? And it's all just kind of and that game comes from also age. Like, what do you want to do with that age? And where is he? Is he from Double A, Triple A? Is it so many things that come into play? And a 3-2 pitch. 
Foul back. And that's another thing that we can sit up here and tell you, hey, this guy's great, this guy's great. We have no idea what they're thinking down there. And there is just no way to ever know. Unless somebody just actually asked the question. And another 3 2 pitch to Ivan Herrera. Way inside, and that'll be ball four. So the one out walk, the home half of the third, the Cardinals leading 1 0 on a Paul Goldschmidt home run. The Kia player profile at Tommy Edmond against Miami in his career. Went four for 11 earlier this season in Miami. A 371 hitter against the Marlins. Marlins want to shift here on the right side. Tommy lined out to right first time up, and that's a ball outside. He's one for six head to head with a strikeout against Lopez. I think when you face a guy like Lopez, you know you're going to have your hands full. And he's going to run off some good innings. But your one saving grace, I think, is if I was playing, you're only seeing 92. So you're going to get pitches to hit. You're just going to have to stay stubborn in what you're looking for and what your game plan is against a guy like this. Because a guy like this can carve you up by going in, out, in, out, in, out. And if you get caught looking for things and anticipating, this is when he eats you up. And if you don't swing at strikes, but when you got a guy throwing 97, you know 98 with with few pitches, but still good stuff. You're guessing a lot fastball, and you so you start your swing early, and that's the same with being pitched in. You start your swing early, so if you can stay out over the plate, at least your saving grace is you know he's got a good fastball, but it is in the lower 90s, and you have a chance to stay on some pitches. And that's the way you have to approach it as a hitter. One two pitch and got him. Strikeout second tonight for Lopez. His parents always served as an inspiration to him. His mother was a medical pathologist, his father, general practitioner, a couple of doctors, and received a very strong education. And he speaks four languages, graduated high school at the age of 16, and accepted into medical school. He had the accelerated education, but also was able to sign as an international free agent in baseball. And he realized quickly it was baseball or med school, like his parents, but not both. And his dad told him this is a once in a lifetime opportunity to enter baseball. He said, Your brain is growing, and college will always be there on the other side of the coin. The body will be. Weakening, and if suddenly you want to enter the baseball industry, you won't be able to. You can always go back to school. So Lopez said to promise his grandma he would get his degree, college degree, before he was allowed to make the decision to pursue baseball and also a high school degree. So he still has to get that college degree, but got the high school degree at the age of 16. Tell you what, it's a win win situation, but. You know, 16 years old at anything. Like I can kind of go off my own 16-year-old. <laughs> Four languages. Pretty awesome. <laughs> I'm still working on the uh, the grade English. point average, let alone graduating. <laughs> I just thought you're still working on English. Mine too. On English. I'm still working on it too. Still trying to catch up to 16. <laughs> Here's a 2-1 pitch. Oh, this guy is strike. This guy's incredible. I mean, he has no joke, and I and I kind of wasn't making light of the situation. This guy's a great pitcher. I'm saying as a hitter, you're saving grace is now blowing guys away, but that doesn't mean anything because this year so far he's got a 2.65 ERA and he's only 26 years old, pitched in 77 games already. So I mean this guy is legit. And it's awesome. These guys always have such great pitching. Just another one of those guys from the Marlins.
So you have pitch calm and then you have the traditional signs there shift on the right side. Herrera off with his pitch to 3 2 put in play by Donovan chopped to birdie he'll underhand to Gary Cooper. Would they be giving signs in different languages. I think fingers are all the same, <laughs> but... universal. <laughs> Hall of Famer and now baseball Hall of Famer. Stud right there, huh? Bet Ted Simmons. Wino had 22 pitches in the first 17 and then 12. 51 pitches as we move into the fourth inning. We'll keep an eye on that. I don't think that's too bad, but I think that's just a little bit higher than he would like it. And a little flare in the right and a base hit by Abby Sale Garcia. And that's not going to help. Well the thing is too Jimmy coming off of yesterday you had to use so many pitchers to cover the game. You would love to see some length in terms of innings out of Wayno here feel tonight. I like we're saying that all every day. I, I do and I feel like it's on him half the time. Well, it's like his spot has seemed to come up the last couple of years following a loss or a losing skid or where you need innings. Well normally you're the number one. You yep. Get the. You know, you get the spot start, the bullpen game, the number five guy, which can float around. You know, you get the uh, the guy that gets skipped after an off day, and you're the guy who has to fill in. You know, back in your spot. So, I think it kind of, you know, it's funny because all of these years you see the guy who has the hardest time with run support and. Um, you know pitching in games like this is usually the ace it's not him it's usually the guy who's matched up against the other guy and you know you're you're both of your guys go out there with a solid ERA and then they have like a 500 record. There's Jesus Sanchez and it's nothing in two maybe even beyond a solid uh, ERA and a 500 record so I mean it's just hit or miss sometimes but the definitely I, I definitely go with after all these years saying the guy who's leading your pitching staff is having the toughest time earning his wins. What's makes what he does even more special. All kinds of room on the left side of the infield Cardinals with a shift. Goldie Gorman Edmond on the right side Arenado basically at the shortstop side of the bag so he'd be the one potentially to turn a double play. And the 0 2 outside corner and struck him out. Number five tonight for Wayno. Boy, by seeing that reaction makes you think it was like a foot off the plate. We'll take a look at it. <laughs> whoa, whoa, wait a second. You can't take a strike. Wow. You can't take a strike and, and then have the. The manager think that you don't know what you're doing, right? That's usually the reaction. But you know, you get that reaction a lot too when a guy starts looking inside and he gets a pinch outside, or you see a guy pull off. And you pull off, if pulling off with your front foot is almost the same as guessing inside because you lose track of the outside part of the plate when you step away a little bit, step in the bucket. And we all know watching kids' baseball, as a lot of kids do. But it's the same for your head. If your eyes kind of want to want to wander to the inside, you lose track of the ball. It's the same reaction. And also, you see a lot of players want your manager to think that, you know, well, there's no way I could have taken strike three. Sure. If I was the manager, I'd go in and look and be like, hey, you can't do that. Like, I don't, you're going to get me thrown out. Miguel Rojas with a base hit to center. One out, runner at first, and a 2 0 pitch. Off the end of the bat, two and one. Bullpen That's yesterday had to cover eight innings for the Cardinals. Six different pitchers: Whitgren, Oviedo, Naughton, Fernandez, Thompson, and Woodford. So you had a bunch. That's gonna, to the point of why you want to see Wayno give you some innings tonight. I was going to say that kind of that strike zone thing almost reminds me of what we saw when we first got the uh, replay. You almost could see what players you can really trust and which players are just always wanting to be safe. You know. Had him out in front on the 2 1 popped up. Nolan Gorman calling for it has it two away. And now a quick word from Great Southern Bank.
What's more convenient than over 100 helpful locations? How about one you can take with you? Wherever life's path leads you, we're just a tap away with Great Southern Mobile Banking. Jim Edmonds, Dan McLaughlin with you here in the booth. And Jim A is with us as well. Bueno has not won in his last six starts. Team is 4 and 2, but he's gone 0 and 2. Last time out was against Milwaukee, went 4 and 2 thirds, one of the rare times that he did not give the club five innings. It's happened a couple of times this year. Talked to him after that start, and he said, Boy, Milwaukee just would not chase. Just would not chase. Too many of those 2 2 counts. Knocked down by Corman. He hesitated with the shift, and sometimes you see that. Guy still trying to get used to it. Do I go after it? Is my shortstop there or not? And that'll be a base hit for Anderson. Let's see what teams have done against his fastball. So more success here in the month of June. Extends the inning to Brian De La Cruz. Lined out to left field. I think for a guy like Wayno too, is from a hitting standpoint, a guy with a lot of pitches, you end up taking more pitches because you really are trying to kind of guess game plan. And I remember as a player, I would have pitchers ask me, "Are you guessing or are you just taking?" And I'm like, mm, "Not really either. I'm just like, don't really know what you're going to come with. And if you just miss." I just took a lucky take and I think with uh, Adam that happens and I remember facing him there's a couple of times we threw some pretty good pitches I was like whoa and then it's a ball and they're looking at you like how did you take that so you know with a guy like this that happens a lot the pitch count gets worked up it's up to him to really throw the ball over the plate how much you think guys guess if you put a, a percentage lot. on it I wouldn't say 50 50 but you know you can see it the only time you can see it is when you see guys take fastball middle or take a late swing on a fastball you think he's he might not have been guessing but he was thinking off speed or thinking slider Goldie does it a lot um, and I think he does it late in the counts and he kind of looks for that best pitch like that slider check swing and he did go that's Laz Diaz bringing him up I think good hitters can do it bad hitters try to guess and it doesn't work two strikeouts in the inning six tonight coming up Paul Goldschmidt and Goldie will lead it off and he's already homered tonight in the Big Mac land and it's one nothing on the home run shy of 300 is Paul Goldschmidt and he taps that foul I'm ready for it Cardinals have one hit it's the home run and they lead it one nothing they've been out hit five one in the game. Big big gap in left center and the 0 1. No balls and two strikes. And he heard me talking, so he's dialed it up to 94 right there. <laughs> you know they can hear us down there, so you got to be careful what you say. You don't offend anyone, but you got to lay it on the line, too. 0 2 pitch and Goldie a base hit on an 0 2. 2 for 2 and the only two hits tonight for St. Louis. Boy, it's tough to pitch him anywhere right now. He's hitting everything. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's funny as you can throw him a couple of really good fastballs or cutters away, and you think, oh, he's just waving at those balls and whatever, and then you go and hang him. It's not even a hanging changeup. Look where this ball's at. This ball's down in his shins, and he just stays on it, and that's the thing. That's why he's laid on the fastballs, because he's really not trying to jump on anything in particular. He's just trying to take a good, solid swing. Orinato three homers five doubles in his last ten fly to left first time up shift on the left side off the plate ball one month of June he's driven in 17 remember he was the player of the month in April drove in 17 and he popped five home runs in April and he's got five in June. You know, for 10, by the way, against Lopez. So if you weren't listening, you could have been talking about the guy at the plate or the guy at first. Yep. And the off month of May, 
but then right back on track in June. And already Jim Hayes has got the wave going. Early start for Jim. <laughs> Did you see him down there? He was running. Have you seen yeah. those guys that run through the concourse? Oh, yeah. He was running with his hands up. I don't know how you see him. Spot him every time. It's amazing. And they won one. Ooh, he was on it. Foul back. Two strikes on Nolan Arnato. Pitching matchups in the series. Dakota Hudson tomorrow. Braxton Garrett, a lefty. And then Wednesday, Palante and Alcantara with the lefty going for Miami. I would assume we'd see Albert Pujols in the lineup tomorrow. We'll see. Hope so. It's been a while for me. And the one two pitch to Arenado. Backs up for a ball. Field straight away deep for the Cardinal third baseman. The 2 2. The foul ball. The pitching of Miami will keep them in a lot of games, and they have played tight games at one run games this year, most in the National League. They've had 28 one run games. And Don Mattingly's club has lost 17 of those 28. The crowd making some noise here for Arenado. And the 2 2 pitch by Lopez. Tied him up, fouled back. Imagine just getting, like you said, good pitching each and every night and then not having, you know, Enough at the end of the day or enough offense to win the game. It's got to be a tough one because you can't really do much about it. You know, it's just teams will play nine against you, and if your studs are going seven and your bullpen isn't strong the whole year, you, have, you know, you have trouble winning games. Well, they've had trouble scoring runs, and so yeah. it's the offense both, both ways. Part I mean, of it. Yep. I want to pick on one side or the other, but it's just tough on Donnie. two two foul. Donnie baseball will probably pulling his hair out from time to time. I would say too, Jimmy, is that you had young players, you know, not a ton of veterans with this club. Now you got Garcia, you got Rojas, Anderson now in his third year, but Stallings is a guy that's helping you control your your pitching staff, but where you look at the Cardinals and they've had a ton of young players but also it's Wayno it's Yachty it's Albert it's Arenado it's Goldie so it's the mix I think that helps too well you're right Danny it, it, you can't just keep shifting gears all the time and expect to win regardless of how good your younger players are 2 2 popped up going out to make the catch Cooper and the first out here in the home half of the fourth you have to have core you have to have the pass down the tradition guys right and there's obviously guys that you're going to have to have around for more than five six seven eight years and when those guys are there and doing what they do what they do on this team here with the Cardinals you're going to get that but when you run through guys every four five six years you're not going to have that core to really have uh, any kind of history. And a shift on the right side. Nolan Gorman. Gorman a base hit into right field. Goldie had to make sure that it got through. It did. Goldschmidt and the Cardinals have been so good going first to third. As a matter of fact, they are one of the best in all the baseball that base running this year and certain metrics you can look at. Cardinals have gone first to third. On 53 singles tied for the second most in baseball they have scored from second on a single 60 times that's most in the game. Yeah that's a great piece of um, base running right there is two reasons it is right barely over the second baseman's head but it's also right at the right field there's nowhere to go if that ball's 
right or left to him and maybe in the gap you take off it's an easy read. And I still believe you know like we were talking about a couple weeks ago about base running when the ball is behind you for some reason is so much harder to read than if the ball's in front of you even if it's just even if you're not running you know unless it's just a different angle and does a nice job right there just making sure that that ball doesn't get caught. Snaps an 0 for 16 for Gorman and the 1 0 pitch to Dylan Carlson off the plate. Lopez stingy in these spots. Runners in scoring position and the opposition just 11 hits on the year and a 180 average against them. Two balls, no strikes, two on, one out. Cardinals half of the fourth inning. Two and one. Danny, I want to give a shout out to the U.S. national Midwest team. 15 and under. They're down in Atlanta right now playing a tournament for a week. And they are watching us and they are listening to us. I don't know how yet, but hey guys, what's up? Keep working hard and we're pulling for you. Good luck. 2 1 pitch to Carlson. Carlson hammers it down the right field line. He yanked it foul. Home run distance, but foul. Thanks. And now a word from Tickets for Less. Tickets for Less for a better ticketing experience. Best seats, best prices, and no surprises at checkout. Two and two. Swing and a miss. Strikeout number three. The Chevy pitch tracks. So the strikeout of Dylan Carlson, ball tailing away, and now it's Juan Yepes with runners at first and second. Two outs. Inning started with a Base hit by Goldie on an 0-2 pitch to left. Arenado popped out. Gorman snapped an 0 for 16 with a base hit to right. Advancing Goldschmidt to second. Strikeout of Carlson and now Juan Yepes struck out swinging back in the second inning. Inside ball one. So there you go. Maybe a pitch for effect. Back him off the plate. We've talked about how he pulls off and now you set him up maybe with a pitch outside he rolls over and you're out of the inning he's been doing a better job I actually went back and looked at a lot of his footage from early on and then recently and he's always pulled off just a little bit but I've noticed was the foot his foot has been more open as of the last couple days until yesterday when his landing foot in the front like a little bit more open right there and the balance is a little bit off and earlier in the year he was landing with that foot closed and what that does is even though he's opening up with the body his hips are staying in there and the bat stays in there a little bit longer and he was driving that ball to right field he hasn't I don't think driven a ball to right center field in a long time since I can remember and the two strike approach has changed a little bit too and you know, that's part of the thing with Larusa. He used to say, you know, just because you hit a couple of home runs, it doesn't make you a home run hitter. Don't forget about all the other things you have to do to be successful. A ball and a strike, two runners on, two outs, and the next to Juan Yepes. Oof. And that's hit out of play. You see the fallback right there it is just changing the bat angle, and it ends up going straight up, and you get a foul ball. You stay over that ball right there and you hit a line drive up the middle. Those are the things you just have trouble watching and figuring out in the heat of the moment. You can see basically Papa Bear right there keeping an eye on him. He's really studying him, looking. He's paying attention. And that's what it looks like when you're trying to help somebody. And the one two pitch to Yepes. Wow, just a bit low. Two and two. Tell you what, a couple years ago when uh, we had Ozuna, he was struggling in spring training, and 
was talking to him and talking to him and he realized that I was paying attention and so he kept asking me just you know hey what do you think during games like when I've been sitting in the dugout I started videotaping him right from the dugout and that's what I felt like I was just staring at every little movement that he was making the 2 2 pitch to Yepes with two runners on and one hits it a ton out to deep left another one off of Big Mac land this one a three run shot his eighth home run of the year the Cardinals have hit a pair of homers and they lead it four to nothing here in game one kind of like that that is a change up that doesn't get down and it does not get in. And I think the last thing that you want to throw somebody who's opening up early is an off speed pitch that stays up in the zone and stays in on the inner half. If this ball's away, he doesn't touch it. Look at this ball right there. I mean, that ball's crushed. He's got some serious power. 393 feet, the distance of the home run, and now it's Lars Newtbar. That's it. He knocked the uh, French fry so uh, sign back on. <laughs> off of Big Mac land, the second one that's hit off of Big Mac land tonight. Those McDonald's people remember how expensive that sign was to fix after, uh, what was it, DeYoung who broke it? A few years ago when the ball stuck in there. Albert did it initially. He knocked out the eye in Big Mac land <laughs> way back when. First time that Yepes has homered in consecutive games. 4 nothing Cardinals with a three run blast with two down here in the fourth. Newt Barr hits it up the middle taken there by Rojas and he is 0 for 2. Juan Yepes with home run number eight. He's driven in 22 on the year. And he knew it. Redbirds on top as we head to the fifth. These and speed is a big part of my game being explosive in all directions, but I was limited. There was a stretch where it was manageable, but the last couple of days with the sharp pain I was feeling, it wasn't me out there. Danny Harrison is going to rest that right foot for a while. All right, Jimmy, thank you. So Yep has a three run homer and a line shot just over Tommy Edmond and the base hit for Jacob Stallings. You think Albert at some point just says all right let's let's just give me a 24 hour break. Yeah, that's when he has to go um, out there on the field and play first base. <laughs> Probably <laughs> right. To either put him out there or let me go out there. That was only the third home run Lopez has allowed to a right-handed batter. So he's given up. He came in with having allowed just one. He's given up two to the righties tonight. Goldie and then Yepes. And Juan, a really good take in that at bat on that pitch that was just below the zone and then hammers that off a of Big Mac land. Well you think about the two pitches that he gave up homers and they were kind of the wrong place at the wrong time to the hitters. They were the basically the bad cutter up to a guy who's so hot it's incredible and then he kind of just threw one in the wrong place to Yepes who kind of just and I'm not being mean about it it's like he just ran into it like you threw into his swing path like and that's where he kills balls and it's almost like if you were to say hey don't throw a fastball down the middle the Big Mac well that's like don't throw anything soft and up to yep as or he's going to kill it and he just did two and one the count on John Birdie. He's one for two tonight Wayno had not received more than three runs of support in any of his last six starts. Last time that he got five or more was his last win, which was back on May 20th. So it had been a while. And a double play ball. Tommy, Nolan, Goldie. 6 4 3, 75 double plays turned by the Cardinals. How about that turn by the young second baseman right there. That was pretty impressive. I know Tommy set him up perfectly, but watch how smoothly and quickly. And I think this all started by Tommy with a good feed. But he just turns it and throws it. He's got a third baseman's arm. So. Well, that's good because then he doesn't have to really get his feet going. Yep. He just needs to turn and get 
pointed in the right direction, but it was a really nice feed by Tommy. It was right there at his hip where the glove is. So the double play, and now two outs and nobody on. Garrett Cooper is single to right and also walked. First pitch fouled back. It's not an accident. You know, these guys are out there every day working on that play right there backhand, forehand, right at you, and then switch sides. And so, in order for these two to work well together, they've probably taken a few hundred thousand ground balls in the last couple weeks or months to get used to it. It's nonstop out there before batting practice. Twelfth different season with 10 or more ground ball double plays. Induced by Adam Wainwright. Slow breaking ball and it's hit out to deep left. And that'll be a ground rule double off the bat of Garrett Cooper on base for the third time. A nice swing right there. And I think Adam just did him a favor. Just barely too slow. Just timed it up so well. That's one of those things. As soon as he let it go, he thought it was a good idea. And then you could see Cooper just sat. That's how you stay back. What a great angle. Look at this camera angle right here. Goes to the front side and then just stays on that back leg. That's when you're going good. That was Yepes's first home run, by the way, on an off speed pitch. Been really getting to the fastball to hit for power. And speaking of power, here is Jorge Soler. If you close your eyes, can you guess velocity on that curveball? The one we just saw, the two, the, the, the double. Two the double. I'm watching you. I'd say 68. <laughs> 63. 63. Even slower than I thought. It's almost like that double clutch softball swing right there. Exactly. <laughs> Since June 23rd, Marlins three for the last 24 with runners in scoring position. 0 for the last seven and 0 for three tonight. So Larry struck out on a 2 2 fastball back in the first inning. And grounded into a fielder's choice in the third. Runner at second is Cooper. And the 1 1 pitch. 1 and 2. We see guys so many times. That pitch, yeah, not very hard in today's day and age of baseball, but the breaking ball keeps them honest. And yeah. they just let those go by. They're I in between. That. I love that pitch sequence right there, too. It kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what is happening. and that gets by Herrera to the backstop so Cooper to third you see that bounce right there he went to block it and it didn't kick like a breaking ball it almost kicked straight like just went straight over the top that's the spin though isn't yeah, it yeah the breaking ball does he has a really true 12 to 6 check, check this out he thinks he covers it but watch it just sneak by see he starts to get down and it just kind of stays down Usually that ball will kick up, at least catch elbow or shoulder or kind of like slid underneath him. 2 2. Spoiled by Soler. Pretty good pitch there by Wayno. That's when you know you have to kind of run something in. You don't want guys fouling curveballs off, a foot off the plate and down. I've always felt and wanted to ask certain players just what is it, you know, you're the Marlins, you're coming in. It's a later portion of June now June 27th and here you have a pretty good crowd for a Monday night. There you go right there. Inside Ooh. and it's two and two. The good point idea. is Jimmy I mean they're not playing in front of a lot of fans and you come here and again this amazing. isn't this isn't packed but it's a nice crowd. Well it's like when you play here every day what do you what do you do to top this you get an all star game or a playoff you know it's that's yeah. the only thing that's going to rival this and this guy's got to love being on the road. Swing and a miss. Slow breaking ball. 75 miles per hour from Bueno. Number going, seven tonight. Going from spring training to opening day, basically. Marlins have left six on, and it's 4 nothing midway through five. The way the game was going yesterday, probably born in the first inning. <laughs> Ivan Herrera. He walked back in the third inning. Well, people forget it took a while for Yachty to get things going. 
First was called up in 04 as his glove and defense brought him to St. Louis and a strikeout of Herrera. And maybe that'll be the case with Yvonne Herrera. Time will tell. Strikeout number four. Catches the bottom of the zone. It looked like he was looking kind of up and away. Did you see his head kind of like leaned out over the plate a little bit as if he was going to get something away or soft and just snuck underneath him. There's Tommy Edmond. Tommy in a little bit of a rut. 0 for 2 here tonight. Lined out, struck out, and takes a pitch down and in for ball one. A shift on the right side of the infield. Get through. That's a base hit. And a one out hit for Tommy Edmond into right field. I don't think Jimmy you can overlook the loss of Harrison Bader what he means to this team last year we would talk about it when Bader and O'Neill were in the lineup this team won a lot of games when Bader started last year Cardinals were 21 games above the 500 mark and when he didn't there were three games below. I mean that's defense his energy and offensively has turned into a nice player. It's a big loss for the next 10 days. It definitely is a big loss but it's it's one of those things that as a player I talked to him last couple of days off and on and he said he was in so much pain that he just couldn't get to the point where he can you know like Jimmy said be himself and you get a guy like that but you get a guy that can't do what he wants to do you have to like you know it's almost like one of those things you know are you better with him broken or without him and somebody else healthy and you do have a couple guys that can play out there but the thing is you got to be careful with him is like Albert he had that foot issue for so long if, if there's certain things you can play hurt or injured and I think that that foot with the that fasciitis or wherever the issue is when he says it feels like he's got a knife in his foot I mean I don't know if you know you can do anything about that and that's the thing that you know like to what you said that's the part that's bad is here you got a key part to your team but if he can't go out there and play you just better off just kind of like OK I understand but let's get somebody out there that's healthy and um, let's hopefully you can get back as quick as possible especially at this time of the season. Edmund running swung on and missed throw to second and safe Tommy Edmund stolen base number 18. clearly know what I'm talking about and that's not to say anything bad or good about anyone it's just the facts and man I, to me it, it almost scares me that they're that when you have the foot problem especially with cleats being so specialized now you know everyone's wearing different pairs of cleats and different styles and foot problems are no joke. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Brendan Donovan. Donovan hits it to the right side and again to birdie three times he is grounded out to the Marlins second baseman and Tommy Edmond advancing to third and it brings in Goldie who's two for two. Statcast powered by Google Cloud take you back to the first inning home run number two ninety nine in the career of Paul Goldschmidt off of Big Mac land. I think it's funny you don't see him hit a lot of balls up in his eyes like that and if you do there that it's that ball it's that middle in up kind of middle speed hanging slider but I, to be honest with you I don't know if I can remember him hitting anything that high in the strike zone for a home run he usually takes it two outs runner at third Lopez has pretty good control but with a guy like Goldie you see it all the time where they an opposing pitcher tries to do a little bit more than they want. Over. They overcook it, and Cooked. all of a sudden, Tommy Edmond with his speed scores the fifth run. Keep that in mind, especially with Brian Anderson, the third baseman, playing back, so Tommy Edmond can get way down the line. Sounds like your dinner is when it's your turn to cook. It's overcooked. 
one way to look at it. Mine too, I think. Goldie came in against Lopez 0 for 6, but tonight 2 for 2. That home run and also a single to left on an 0 2 pitch. One ball and one strike. Big gap in left center field. Tommy Edmond, the one out base hit, stole the base number 18, advanced on the ground out. As Goldie hits it out of play. Lefties, righties. Doesn't matter. Well, the lefties, 451. And really, the thing is, Jimmy. Look at the Boston not Red Sox. That, not that he's done that to that level in his career against lefties that high, but he is crushed in his career left handed pitching. 451. It's incredible. Off the plate, and it's two and two. Remember when I told you earlier this year we were talking about certain players, and we talk about a platoon player, and they don't hit the opposite. Handed pitcher, you got to kind of take. Splits. Yeah, you got to have to take it. Well, you have to take a look, like a, a secondary look at is this guy really that good? Because normally those are the guys that kill righty, lefty, lefty, righty. Um, and so you think, okay, well, how's he doing at that? And even if he doesn't play against the same sided hand as he, he hits on, you're thinking, well, how's he still getting by? <laughs> the two-two out to deep right field. Garcia back, and it's off the wall. Goldie. On his way to second, a triple away from the cycle that scores Tommy Edmond. Paul Goldschmidt with two outs and runners in scoring position. 393 the average and on the rise. I don't know if I pitched to him right there. I don't know. I was thinking that the whole time. I think he got ball one and then he got strike one, strike two. But man, that is just it's a good piece of hitting. <laughs> That's almost knocked down the wall. Did you have a slight, slight doubt that that ball might actually get up over the wall because you can't Hit see the distance low. as well? I know. Yeah. I was like, this is going to sneak over the wall. I'm going to be shocked. But then it almost knocked the wall down. Kind of the similar trajectory of the home run of Matt Holliday's last yeah. home run as a, a Cardinal was kind of like that. Didn't think it was going to get out, but just kept on going. Yep. I didn't think that ball was going to go that far. I knew it was going to get over his head, but wow, the ball's crushed. First That's run scored by Tommy Edmond in five games. That's his second longest streak of the season. That's how good he's been at scoring runs. I know you don't want to make. Arnado mad, but I, I really have a hard time believing you want to throw to Goldie right there. Happy 30th birthday yet again to Anita Lee. Amazing how she keeps hitting 30. Anita Lee, happy birthday. And the 1 1 pitch to Arnado spins away from a ball inside. That's the byproduct right there of that fastball that Goldie hit off the wall. I was thinking maybe I got to get the ball inside a little bit more often. Pretty comfortable at bats, huh? By the well, Cardinals I just tonight. think especially the way Goldie swung at that pitch. I mean, that but that's just what you know. You fall into patterns as a pitcher, and if you don't come in for a while, I mean, guys are still going to dive out over the plate. They know that's a, a pitch for a reason. But you know me and my theory, right? Don't wake up a guy who's. Kind of just hanging around. You don't want to throw at guys and you're going to wake them up and make them mad, especially these two. You can just see right there. I mean, is anyone, have you ever seen anyone respond to adversity and being thrown at or just missing pitches like Arnado does? I mean, he can turn it up in an instant. The 2 2 pitch to Nolan Arnato. The strikeout, two in the inning and five in the game, but a two out double by Goldschmidt off the wall in right. He's driven in two more. He's up to 64 this season. It's not even July. It's in tomorrow. On the air both nights, six o'clock. Hope you join us. The Budweiser, what's on tap? 
Avisel Garcia. He is one for two. Jesus Sanchez and Miguel Rojas. By the way, by no means am I saying that Avisel Garcia is Miguel Cabrera. I was waiting for you to come up with this one. But man, does he have the stance, the look, the way he wears the uniform. I mean, it just it it looks like same number. Cabrera. It does look just like him. Even the stance is a little bit like him, too. Wayno had 22 pitches in the first inning. And it's gone down ever since. There's Nolan Gorman to his left. And it's been the reverse on the other side. Lopez, 13 pitches, first inning, but 25, then 18. And maybe catching up with him. We'll see. 5 0 our score. As we play in the top of the sixth, I would say Miguel Cabrera, Albert, the two greatest right handed hitters of their generation, and they'll go down as two of the best that ever played this game. You said it. Think about what Miguel Cabrera did in Florida and Detroit. I mean, wow. So one out and nobody on, and. A strike to Jesus Sanchez. And the 0 1 taken a bit low, and it's one ball and one strike. See, that's like the pitch I was saying right there. You're thinking it, Wainwright's thinking, how does he take that? And you're just kind of like thinking, is he going to give me something up, give me something in? And then the ball comes out of the hand, and you're like, you don't pull the trigger. And the pitcher's like, why didn't he swing? The count and mouse, cat and mouse game. One and two, the count, 85 pitches for Wayno here tonight. Next to Sanchez inside. It's a great pitch right there. Remember Sanchez caught looking back in the fourth and was kind of smiling looking back at the home plate umpire. You got a veteran on the mound anything close you better swing. He does swing there and missed it by a foot. And Yvonne Herrera completes the out strikeout number eight. Sanchez hitless over three pair of strikeouts. Wayno is struck out eight. And it brings in Miguel Rojas, who is one for two tonight. Well, the Cardinals yesterday had a five nothing lead, could not hold it. Five nothing. With two outs and nobody on. Rojas a base hit to center popped out to second slow breaking ball in for a strike. Why would he stop in 2022 and I don't think he will talking about Adam Wainwright He's thinking the same thing the other day. Two strikes. I just don't think we realize the amount of time and effort and work. That it takes to do what he's doing. He's made all the money you could make in the world that you'd want to make, so that's not the issue. It's family and your desire to compete. Ground ball may have been off the bag, off balance throw, and he got him. We're on a play again. Nolan Arnato stayed with it. Who knows where that ball is going? But we know that's going to be an out. And a little smile from Wayno. Defense of the infield of the Cardinals is just sensational. Ten pitches, eight strikes. Right up their alley right there, too. I Damn. think you're going to get a special exemption. Just for you. Thank you very much. Richard Blyer is in, and that hits Gorman. I'm going to say he swung, I believe, and then... It hits him, so that'll be a strike. Let's take a look at some point here as Chris Conroy is out to check on Nolan Gorman. A 
Oh. Right in the wrist. Flyer pitch a couple of days ago against the Mets. Got hit twice, I believe, there and there. And you know what? That's and not, he got a strike called on him. It's not much of a swing to be automatic. That's the thing that I don't. I hated that when I was playing. Got throws the ball at your face, and you're trying to start your swing, get out of the way, throw the bat in the air, and they say strike one, and you're like, you kidding me right now? Almost got my teeth knocked out, and you're like, strike one. Lopez, the starter tonight, five innings, five runs on six hits, struck out five, walked one, gave up a pair of homers, and the 0 1 pitch by Blyer missed in. Hit a homer right here. That's how you do it. Marlins had a 3 2 walk off win against the Mets yesterday. Nick Fortes, game winning solo home run with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. So they're coming off the high of a, a walk off win. Cardinals coming off a crushing defeat. And yet, Wayno doing what he does, being a stopper and one of the top pitchers still in the game. They needed a very good outing from Adam Wainwright. So far, you're getting that. It was kind of a one handed swing there by Gorman. Oh, I can't imagine that it feels good. I mean, it doesn't matter if you swung or not, you still got hit in the hand. And that's what is aggravating more than anything. I used to think that sometimes for the first base, third base umpire to watch that and call it a strike, you got no compassion in the game at all. Well, rules are rules. Ball game rules but, are rules. But that wasn't a clear cut swing, by the way, either. It didn't have to be. You think he went? I don't care if he went. I said it what well, didn't have to be. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Turner Ward there on the left. It's just talking about exactly what I'm talking about. It's not fun. There's Dylan Carlson, this side of the plate, hitting 317. And he's over two tonight, grounded out to first, and also called out on strikes back in the fourth, over two. Beautiful night here at the ballpark. Temperatures ideal. Heat wave was here for the last couple of weeks. Coming back too. Carlson hits it out to left. Extra bases. On his way to second. And in sliding with a one out double. So his last 11 hits, eight have gone for extra bases. That's what you like to see. I love his swing from this side of the plate. He doesn't. I like him and Tommy both when they throw left. He like get those guys on the other side. I think they both got great swings. You're not losing anything by both of these guys hitting right handed at all. Danny, if you didn't like uh, last week's heat wave, just wait till the next one. Is that right? A couple of days, yeah. It's back up in the 95, 96. We will be prepared and ready. Ooh. Then the one after that, and the one after that. The fastball outside and low to Yepes. Three run homer back in the fourth, and he's one for two. When I first got here in the old stadium, it would get so hot that we changed pitchers and the sun would be straight up. And I would stand out in the center field, and there's zero shade, but I would stand up against the wall as if the you know sun being straight yep. up. Deep left. The man is red hot. And another long home run. Juan Yepes, two home runs. And he's driven in five tonight. First home run against a lefty this year. We we're talking about the reverse splits of guys. Been very good against righties, but his first home run against a lefty this year. 
I guess maybe he wasn't uh, listening the first time. And a strike on Lars Dubar. This is the kind of answer the Cardinals needed after yesterday. 7 0 our score as we play here in the home half of the sixth. One ball and one strike. Juan Yepes now with nine home runs, and he's driven in 24 on the year. First multi home run game of his young career. And that's lifted in the air to right field off the bat of New Bar in the out. Caught by Avisail Garcia. Now number two. And now a word from BOS. You're moving up in the world. You deserve a bank that can keep up with your changing needs. It's time to make the bold move. BOS. Bank boldly. Yvonne Herrera has walked and also called out on strikes 0 for 1. This might be the time after maybe one more inning from Adam Wainwright where you see a major league debut coming out of the bullpen at the time right now seven run lead but James Nail. Well, like something to, to think it. about throw him right in the fire first day get it out of the way. Now he's never going to leave Alfred alone. And the 1 0 pitch chopped to third. Brian Anderson. Two home runs. Juan Yepes tonight. He's driven in five. Back in the fourth, it was a three run shot. And then a no doubter again. A two run homer. Juan Yepes. Bam. 7 0 St. Louis. Six going into tonight, and he can play anywhere in the field. What about Brendan away from the diamond? He told me, I hate to break it to you, but I'm a boring guy. I'm a homebody. I like to sleep, and I like to just hang out. Donovan said, during the winter, I travel a little, but during the season, I'm all baseball. I'm either at the ballpark or home with my fiance and my dog, Danny. Brendan's dog is named Dixie, a little mixed breed. All right, thank you, Jimmy. 7 0, and the uh, baseball rat that he is, Brendan Donovan. He's played six different positions for the Cardinals this season. Of course, Jim would mix in the report about a dog. Is I've learned a lot about his <laughs> dog, Stella. He's sneaking another way to you got it. support the dogs. 34,701 tonight. 34701. It's the Gold Day Show. Goldschmidt Yepes. <laughs> oh, here we go. Working on a little smoosh. Ooh, Don't forget the about the uh, Wainwright guy. I'll get to him in a bit. <laughs> I'll get to you. <laughs> Adam Goldez tonight. There you go. Does that make you happy? Yeah, three man show. Don't worry about the other guys. 2 2. Swing and a miss. Nine yeah. strikeouts. Back in 2016, a memorable night against the Marlins. And I believe this was the night that you were celebrating. The 06 championship club the reunion of that team. Ten years later and these two still going strong talking about Yachty. And Wayno complete game you guys were in a suite. And a nod to you right guys to you my friend. That was awesome. I was sitting right in this chair. Jorge Soler. And Solera ground ball backhanded Edmund long throw and 
got him. What a play. Flat-footed from the outfield grass, Tommy Edmond. I mean, this is just a great play. He stops his feet just in time, sets himself up to throw. Arenado stopped. Not sets sure he could have gotten up to there. Throw before he even got a chance to throw. And it's two away after the double by Cooper in the fifth inning. It's six in a row set down by Adam Wainwright. He's allowed seven hits. He struck out nine. Two outs. And nobody on, and that pitch hit out of play. Yep, as the eighth rookie since 1920 with two home runs, five driven in in a game. Pujols never did it. He had a pair of two home run games as a rookie, but not the runs batted in. Pretty impressive. And he, along with Goldie, have been the story tonight offensively. Goldie is three for three a home run, a double, a single. He's driven in two. Juan Yepes, a three run homer, two run homer, and he's driven in five. Here's a one two pitch to Stallings put in play hit to short Edmund gets it on the short hop makes the play time to stretch one two three go the Marlins and we head to the home half of the seventh seven nothing seeing that shot right there from the great Tommy our director tells you Wainwright is more than likely done smile talking to Miles Michaelis seven innings tonight from a Wayno. The flip side Pablo Lopez five earned tonight second most he's allowed this year gave up six back on the 17th of June against the Mets he allowed three home runs in that game two tonight last time the Cardinals hit three or more home runs in a game against the Marlins was all the way back in 2016 fam had a pair Piscotty and Grichik some names from the past. I thought you were going to say the last time the Cardinals hit three homers in a game was yesterday. A little Fair. over 24 hours ago. <laughs> Did that in an inning. <laughs> this was quick. That was bang, bang, bang. Eric Gonzalez is the new shortstop. Comes in for Rojas. And the top of the St. Louis lineup is Edmund, Donovan, and Goldie. Shift on the right side. The 0-2 pitch to Tommy Edmund. Breaking ball of beauty. First out in the home half of the seventh. And for the Cardinals getting loose, it's James Nail. Pretty good breaking ball right there. It's what you're going to see out of Nance. Fastball, curveball, slider. Hasn't pitched in about six days. It's a long time to sit out there in the bullpen. There's Brendan Donovan, the Gateway Honda home run inning. Cardinals hit a home run. The Gateway Honda dealers donate $1,000 to the Make a Wish Foundation of Missouri. Donovan three times is grounded out to second. Hitless tonight. Paul Goldschmidt is a triple away from the cycle. He's on deck. Gonna be a tough one for him, but there's a lot of room out there. Funny hop, a funny lot bounce. Of room out there. You never know. And the one-one pitch. Someone goes Good for take. a soft liner, dives for it, gets by. You never, never know. You never know. Benji Molina, our buddy at Fenway, had a I can't even cycle. Believe, I can't even believe that. He he might be slower than Yachty. Actually, I, I'm going to go with you slower than the eye. <laughs> Three and one to count. It would be run. It would be a runoff from Benji and Jose. Out of play. I have to ask him who would be faster, and you know he's going to say him, but 
I have the text, all three of them. Got the foul ball, you get a souvenir and some happy fans here at the ballpark and a hug. I love seeing that. 3 2 pitch, fouled back. Come to the ballpark. Popcorn, Cracker Jack, the hot dogs, Coca Cola, and a souvenir. What a beautiful night. 3 2 pitch. And a strikeout of Donovan. Back to back K's for Nance. That was a dirty breaking ball. Two away. It's a big breaking ball straight down. Wow. Big night for Goldie. Home run, single, double. Pair of runs batted in. One home run shy of 300. First pitch is strike. Marlins will have the top of their lineup coming up. Got 22 career triples. And Benji had one. <laughs> the stand up triple in Fenway. It's one of those, I believe, it kind of rattled around the, the 420 mark. I, right the, center, maybe. The center field area kind of and bounced. Yeah, kick to the right into the corner and the. You know the thing about that is the right fielder comes over to play it off the wall in case it bounces up and it shot back over towards right center. End up putting yourself out of position and there you go. Two strikes on Goldie. We'd love to see the stat cast on him running around the bases. And the one two pitch to Paul Goldschmidt off the plate two and two. Oh, that's a big breaking ball man. It's a good one. Two outs nobody on and a two two pitch to Goldie. Three and two. That breaking ball is almost 3,000 revolutions. Getting RPM. The 2,800, it's 2,900. You're talking 2,900. Pretty good. Yeah. And a 3 2 pitch. Goldschmidt hits it up the middle. Off the glove of Birdie. And it's a four hit night for Paul Goldschmidt. Keep running. Was it Goldie that hit the ball the other day from the Little League homer? Yes. That was pretty impressive, too. <laughs> I think that Little League homer was as exciting as those homers in the Big Mac land. Jim's uh, referring to the, the ball that got away from three defenders of the <laughs> Brewers that allowed Goldie to score. Three defenders the second time. Last four hit game for the Cardinals was Nolan Gorman at Milwaukee. Let's see if Arnado can't get in the act here. He's hitless tonight. Fly to left, popped out, and struck out. A one. Nothing at two. Short lead at first by Goldschmidt. And a shift on the left side, and that's a ball in the dirt. And it's one ball and two strikes.
James Nail, a Cardinal fan, grew up in the state of Missouri, set to come in. Arenado waves at it, strikes out, three strikeouts in the inning. We'll see a major league debut when we come back. For Wayno. He's trying to run his record to 8 2 all time against Miami at the BJC Healthcare Difference Maker. He's working with Yvonne Herrera, becoming the 17th different player to catch Wainwright in his career. And now a major league debut with family and friends here. Pretty awesome. John Birdie and a strike. How great is that? These fans know what's going on. They all may be from Charleston, which is where he grew up. Cardinal fan. And a ground ball hit to the right side. Nail to the bag, and he has his first out in the big legs. He's in relief of Adam Wainwright and growing up in his room as a young boy posters of both Wayno and Yachty and now they are his teammates just 29 years old Born drafted in, in 2015 by Oakland he was a 20th round selection out of Alabama Birmingham and then signed with the Cardinals it's a free agent in November seven seasons in the A's farm system and now in the big leagues first pitch to Garrett Cooper is hit out of play it's his family and friends I'm telling you folks they're making a bunch of noise here at Bush Stadium <laughs> at 27 games with Memphis made three starts was three and two with a three two eight ERA and now gives up his first base hit I'm gonna get it all in there the first night you don't have anything to worry about the next time you pitch. One out hit by Garrett Cooper and it brings in Soler. The month of June. Eight games two starts at 15 strikeouts in 18 innings. Breaking ball and a strike. Coming in, pump and strikes. Oh, one pitch, nothing in two. Nasty sinker right there. But when you know when you see a ball that moves like that, when the hitter goes up to hit it and it comes back down. Wow. And the 0 2 pitch by Nail. Ground ball left side. Can they get two? Out there. Welcome to the big leagues, James Nail. A scoreless inning in his debut. A Cardinal fan. And now the birds on the bat. And a night he'll never forget. Awesome. Nolan Gorman is one for three. And there is strike one. Jake Woodford picks up a baseball and starts to throw. Thought they might extend Nail for beyond that inning. He had only seven pitches, but maybe just getting his feet wet and say, hey. Have to get his heart rate back. That's right. Come on back down to earth. <laughs> Gorman out to right. And the line drops in. As Garcia may have lost it in the lights, and that'll be a double for Nolan Gorman. It's a ball I was telling you right there. It's kind of that medium fly ball line drive in the gap in the corner outfielders on both sides. You just he gets in there. Does not matter what you do. That's also two playing so far over there. Left, the center fielder is way on the other side. I don't know if I would agree with that playing him the other way, would you? 
center field. He's starting to hit the ball though more to left and up the middle. He's not pulling off as much. So maybe that's part of the equation. I guess that's the old if he hits it up in the air to right center it's a homer so don't bother playing over there. By the way. On deck Yepes no Cardinal rookie has ever had a three home run game and he's got two tonight. Carlson the base hit down into the right field corner. Gorman will score. Dylan on his way to second. He's thinking three. Dylan Carlson standing up at third with an RBI triple his second hit tonight. The Cardinals extend their big lead. It's now eight nothing. Tell you what Dylan Carlson right here the whole time I believe he's thinking triple because he ran as hard as you can possibly run around the bases the whole way he was flying. Been 44 times in Cardinals history a multi home run game for a rookie which includes Juan Yepes here tonight shift on the left side and Yepes taps one foul up the third base line. Tell you what the one thing that Dylan did do by hustling is allow him to hit a sack fly if he does miss it and that's a big play right there for Carlson to hustle the third. Don't hang it. The 0 1. 0 and 2. But Weiser plays of the game. Hit one in Big Mac land yesterday. Off of the front of Big Mac land tonight. Three run homer in the fourth, two run homer in the sixth. And he's driven in five. And the 0 2 pitch. <laughs> The swing and a miss. <laughs> a little smile from Albert Pools. Oh, you know he's going to give it to him when he gets back. Fourth strikeout in two innings by Nance. He's got a big curveball, and that is just. Looks <laughs> like the right-handed Ichiro on a breaking ball. <laughs> There's Lars new bar and a fastball and a strike. James Nail 2011 grad of Charleston High School Cardinal fan makes his debut here at Bush Stadium tonight. And really not that far for family and friends to come to watch this game. He was the 2011 standard Democrat baseball player of the year pitched at Parkland Community College just outside Champaign Illinois Alabama Birmingham many many years in the minors and a major league debut here in St. Louis. Awesome. The one one and a foul ball. You got to make sure that that group there those family and friends that have come they, they got to get off their cell phones because well, you never know you got to be paying attention right to now, foul sure. ball but you know they're getting Blood hundreds if not thousands of text messages right now and if you know them text away let's see them get to work <laughs> that's awesome June 11th of 2015 he was interning good play at a metal sales company and he and his co-workers had gathered around his cubicle to to watch the draft ticker and saw that dream come true. He was selected by the A's. 81 innings in community college. He struck out 88. Finds himself at Alabama Birmingham. And the funny thing is when he had signed with Parkland he didn't know if he was good enough to even play at the Juco level. Well. James you made it to the big leagues you're plenty good enough. 2 2. 2016 Danny he played in a ball normal upper a ball double A and triple A all in the same season. That's incredible. 
can't imagine what's going through his mind right now. The seven pitch inning in your debut. Arenado helps turn a double play. You're in relief of one of your heroes in Adam Wainwright. Goldie made a great pick on the double play, too. 2 2. And a strikeout of Newbar. Hitless tonight, 0 for 4. And now a word from St. Louis Children's. St. Louis Children's Hospital, the only place where Washington University physicians have gathered from across the globe, discovering and developing life changing treatments for kids. You were talking about the excitement of the Little League home run or a home run in Big Mac <laughs> land. I'll tell you what, give me the excitement and the story and the history of a player making his debut. There is nothing better. No. It, it would be great to be able to hear what he has to say tonight. I hope they get some good good footage of an interview because I think that's as important as anything. I think it's awesome to uh, maybe the cat down there waiting on him already. And an 0 1 pitch to Herrera. Gets away. And a run will score easily. That's Dylan Carlson. And it's a 9 0 St. Louis lead. Matter of fact, Cat, if you are able to hear us, I know he was en route to going downstairs, but hopefully, if you can get James Neal, that would be. Terrific. Now there's a lot of a lot of candidates. You got Yepes with a couple of home runs. You got Wayno, but Major League debut is so special, especially for somebody that grows up in this state and a Cardinal fan. I just think it would be cool for even if he doesn't get him early, that he gets him and oh, he'll get gets him. to hear what he has to say tonight on the news because you know how many people are watching. Tapped foul. And we may see another debut. Connor Capel is moved to the on deck circle. I think his heart rate's out right now. <laughs> James Neal pulled him aside and said, Look, <laughs> it's not, that, not hard. that hard, man. It's not that bad. It doesn't matter, man. I'll tell you what. You think you're nice and calm in the uh, on deck circle. As soon as you step foot out there, oof. it starts to race. Everything's fast. Capel was part of the Mercado deal a few years ago. Mercado just brought back to the majors by the Phillies. The 2 2. I say it all the time, and John Eulett deserves a lot of kudos as well. The longtime PA announcer here at Bush Stadium, whether you're a visiting player, home player, he says, ladies and gentlemen, making his major league debut. Player X, and I love that. You don't hear that, and very you're starting to hear it more because we heard it somewhere recently, but you don't hear that much, and you never heard it back in the day. Certainly, you wouldn't hear it. Especially on a visiting player. <laughs> yeah, I don't care less. Well, if he gets on, we'll see another major league debut. Just. One of the things you pull for now in a nine to nothing game, you want to see some more excitement. And the three two pitch got him. Strikes out six in two innings. Nance. It's nine nothing St. Louis, and we head to the ninth. Just announced by John Hewlett making his major league debut. He is in left for Donovan. Donovan going to third. Chevy call to the pen takes us to Jake Woodford and Mundo Sosa is at shortstop and Andrew Kisner is at first base. So those are the changes for St. Louis. There's a gang of changes right there. That's how you do it. The first pitch is swung on and fouled away. So as we mentioned, Donovan going to third base. So all kinds of changes here for the Cardinals. They've unloaded the bench with the exception of Albert Pujols just in case they need an arm. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Outfield pretty much straight away. Garcia is one for three tonight. Adam Wainwright seven innings nine strikeouts. That's off the plate and it's one and two. Marlins have left six on tonight the Cardinals three. The Cardinals at one point being out hit five one in the game now now about hit the Marlins eleven eight and lead it nine nothing. The one two rounder foul I was just looking through. The stats and uh, you know the game was kind of in control by Adam and the two things that stuck out really quick were I didn't realize he gave up seven hits and then 101 pitches just seemed like he was cruising along the whole time and you know it's really funny I remember kind of growing up listening to uh, Ben Scully and he would say he scattered seven hits chopper Donovan first out. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Cardinals not to be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. Jesus Sanchez over three tonight pair of strikeouts. Connor Capel his father was a big leaguer. He was a right handed pitcher. Pitched in 49 games, late 80s, early 90s. He was with the Cubs, the Brewers, and the Houston Astros. Also, his dad, a, a teammate of Roger Clemens at the University of Texas. That's pretty cool. Capel played high school baseball at Seven Lakes High School in Katy, Texas. Then came to the Cardinals from Cleveland. And the 1 0 pitch. Out of play. So nail his debut comes in in relief of Bueno and that's hit to third off balance throw Donovan. Why not you're kidding. I was wondering how he's going to throw it and was thinking is he going to stop is he going to jump and he just throws a bullet on the run said that he follows Arenado and Goldie around all the time right before games defensively to watch how they take round balls before the first pitch and that's a little bit of Arenado asking how he throws off balance too. <laughs> So two outs and Gonzalez Eric Gonzalez his first plate appearance came in two innings ago for Rojas Cardinals lead it nine nothing. I like the guy behind the plate there he's the first one to stand up ground ball to short Sosa is there and the Cardinals take game one by the final of nine to nothing. A pretty good job like you said where do we start Adam Wainwright seven innings seven hits no runs I like the nine strikeouts and only one walk. What do you got Goldsmith or Yepes or both or nail or cable got just a, a good night at the ballpark. It would be a good night to break this one down. That's coming up next on the post game show the Cardinals win it and St. Louis is now 42 and 34 on the year. Paul Goldschmidt set the tone early on with a home run number 299 of his career. Juan Yepes is Goldie at four hits. Juan drives in five. And Goldie doing what Goldie does. What a night for him. What a night for the Cardinals. Back on the winning track and they win it 9-0. Post game next. <laughs>